is uh, David George Brook, that gratitude guy. And he's been a speaker, a life coach, and a best-selling author, author for over 25 years. He is a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed in the corporate world for over 30 years. His published works include the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and a number of other books on gratitude. He recently shared the stage with Bill Gates Sr. at a regional conference and is currently conducting keynotes and workshops for the Special Olympics, Children's Hospital, DSHS, and our U.S. military, just to name a few. As, re as a result of his passion for gratitude, he has presented over 250 speeches and workshops in the past three years. With over, with over 650 gratitude videos posted on YouTube, thousands have seen his message, and he is now considered a leading authority on how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. He resides in Issaquah, Washington. Let's give it up for David George Brooks. Thank you, Trent. By show of hands, how many folks here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? It's about three quarters. I am fortunate enough to do talks. You heard Trent tell a little bit about my background. I'm fortunate enough to do talks from high schools for commencement speeches to colleges all the way to nursing homes where the average age is 95. In the nursing homes, everybody raises their hand, not surprisingly. 100% of people have suffered a significant personal loss. But what really shocks me is in high schools, about half the kids raise their hands. Half of them already have suffered a significant personal loss. I want to tell you very briefly about my significant personal loss. It was September 29th, 1998. It was a Tuesday. I woke up about 6.30 in the morning, and I looked over to the side of my bed, and I couldn't find my wife. Now, that's very strange. I wonder where Dana is. Just then, my four-year-old, Connor, comes in. Where's Mommy? I don't know. So we get up, and we walk out the doorway, and Kyle, my 14-year-old, same question. We don't know. So we look in this room, this room, this room. We go downstairs and we turn and we look and there's Dana down in front of the washer and dryer. She's all crumpled over. It doesn't look good. So we go running down there. I turn her over. I said, Connor, Connor can't even contain himself. What's happened to mom? He starts crying. Kyle, call the police. Call fire. I start doing mouth to mouth, chest compressions, all the things I remember from Red Cross. In about five or ten minutes, there must be 30 people in our house. They got her out on the floor, they got the tubes and the wires, and they got those shocking things doing that, bam, like that. Most surrealistic thing I'd ever seen. For those of you, and I know there are many of you in this room that have gone through something like that, one of the things you may remember is that time loses all measure. I'm standing there, can't, I can't stop crying. What's happened to my wife? I'm trying to console Connor and Kyle. This little fire person comes up to me and says, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for an hour and a half. We still don't have a heartbeat. Do you want us to continue? Well, even when you're in shock, most of your body shuts down except for the vital organs and the brain has a little bit of computing power left. I thought, 90 minutes, no heartbeat. And I said, you can stop. And she was dead. And she was 38 years old. And one of the things that I noticed, I had people to a lot of these talks I was telling Trent and Katie. And they go, boy, you sure start off with a bang, don't you? Is this going to be less depressing than the first two minutes? <laughs> I go, yeah, because I'm going to give you some tools how to cope in life. But I do know that it was very difficult because I'd had a whole bunch of other losses, a whole bunch. In my earlier talks, I used to bring up the stuff about my mom's cancer, my dad's suicide with a shotgun, on and on and on. And what happened to me when Dana passed away, I didn't think I could go on. Everybody seems to struggle in this world. When I do the high school commencement speeches and I talk to these colleges, I always go like this. This is life, up and down, up and down. I never met anybody where it's all up or all down. But when it's up, it's fantastic. When it's down, it sucks. This is where you want to be again, up here, but down here is where you learn all the lessons. I've also noticed when I'm up here, everybody seems to have my phone number. 
uh, when I'm down here, nobody seems to call. Fascinates me how people are. So to me, I saw a little something on the Withers Lumber log, uh, log, uh, website about attitude. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But so much of this has to do with how you look at something. I'd like everybody to stand up if you'd be so kind. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to raise your right arm and I want you to turn it in a clockwise manner. Now you can just imagine in the high schools, they have no idea what clockwise is. And they're going like, what's clockwise? I'm looking at my digital watch. And I go, Gemini, it's this way. Gosh. So keep it going clockwise. Now just start slowly bringing it down. Keep it going clockwise. Keep it to your eyes, your nose, your chin, your chest, down to your waist. Now what direction is it going? Bueller? Who said that? The gentleman in the orange shirt? Good job. Counterclockwise. Okay, you can sit down. So, there's always the gentleman in the French blue shirt. What's your name, sir? Cisco? God, all these cool names. When you have a name like Dave, it's just like, God, it's rough. Felisa, Felicia. I mean, it's like, God, Dave. Tristan, Tatum. Go, Dave. Hi, I'm Dave. Anyway, nice to see you, Cisco. Cisco is kind of going like this. I could do it with a glass of water and I could say it's half full or half empty, but this is simply how you look at it. I have these fraternity brothers. They came and saw my talk one day and they said, yeah, you know, we saw your little talk and frankly, we weren't that impressed. And I went, well, that's fine. I've known you guys 40 years. But then he says, how'd you do this? Well, if you're such a genius and you think my talk is such baloney, how come you have to ask me about this? But that's the thing, looking up, looking down. It just depends on how you look at it. So one of the things that I found, Dana had died of a prescription pill overdose. Vicodin and Oxycontin and all that kind of nasty stuff. Everybody's looking for a way to cope. These kids that I get to talk to, the seniors that I get to talk to, stress. I was saying to Trent and Katie, I don't know if I'd want to be a kid in this day and age. It's tough. But you have to have a way to cope. So one of the ways that I've learned to cope is embracing something called gratitude. And you, we we're going to talk in a second about the attitude. If you look at the Withers Lumber website, it talks about attitude, how important it is. Well, one of the things I really like is an attitude of gratitude. So if you embrace gratitude, what does gratitude do? Gratitude helps you to focus on everything you have versus what you don't have. We live in a world where everybody's always telling you what you don't have. I get a bigger car, better house, more children, this, that, making more money. It's crazy. We don't stop to think and stop just for a moment to consider what we have. I, have a, I do a gratitude journal every day. I write in for five minutes. I'm going to talk about that later. All it does is help me to focus on what I have. So how does that work? So you're going to see some little three by five cards at your table. Grab a three by five card if you would. And you're going to need a partner for this. Most of the tables I looked around are even. Michael? You and I are going to partner up, I think, because we've got an odd number here. I don't care if you've known this person five minutes or 25 years. It makes no difference. This little exercise. So you, there should be pens there, and there should be the, enough cards. Excuse me. Has everybody got a partner? And there's no three, try whatever you call it stuff. It's partner, partner. So here's what you're going to do. On your card, upper left-hand corner, Write two words. I'll be, down, I'll be down with you in a second. Write these two words. You are. Y-O-A. Y-O-A. Y-O-U-A-R-E. Never got through school, but I'm a hell of a speaker. You are. In the right-hand upper corner, put your partner's name. And then in the lower right-hand corner of the card, Sign your name, print it, just whoever you are. You can sign or print. Lower right-hand corner. So you've got you are in the upper left-hand corner, your partner's name in the upper right-hand corner, and your name in the lower right-hand corner. Everybody with me? Well, I didn't get your name anyway. Steve, I just messed up. Steve messed up. That's okay, you can scratch it out. Okay, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Here's what we're going to do. There's my timer. And again, I don't care if you're married to this person, it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, and you have never met them. I want you, I'm going to give you 60 seconds to write as many things 
that you possibly can about that person to describe them. You are positive. You are energetic. You are always smiling. Anything that you can think of, 60 seconds, go. Hold on, I gotta do Michael. We may have to revisit this. We'll we may have to revisit, we'll get started. About 30 seconds to go. Okay, and stop. Now some of you may be able to write a little more than other people. Every, t every so often I look in these audiences, I do small to really large audiences, I'll look out and there's somebody going like this, and I go, wow, that's all you can think of? Gee, many. wouldn't want to be your partner. Okay, take another 60 seconds and take 30 seconds each and each of you read to each other what you wrote about each other. Okay. This is what I have so far. Okay. Energetic, great smile, great laugh, smart, warm, intelligent. Funny, I already said. Did I put that in there? You're a funny, and I didn't even know you and you're funny. Okay, so I'm only getting started. Okay. So, so I stole from you. You're positive, you're smiling, you're energetic, because that was <laughs> thankful, direct, mm -hmm. well spoken, and yeah. present. Thank you, thank you. That's pretty good. Yes, what have we known each other? Four minutes, right? Three minutes. Okay, okay. 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Is fast, you can nail me, I kind of nailed you. Smile, or you have a great laugh, you're smart, you're warm, and tell you, I don't even know you, but that's the sense I get. And that's where I try to tell people, that's why, that's what gratitude does, because gratitude helps you folks. Instead of me telling it to you, you're telling it to yourself. See, which is really cool. You missed the handsome part. Oh yeah, handsome, hold on. That's usually number one on, it, on my list. I'll take 20 bucks for that. All right. Okay, stop. Hopefully you got a chance to read it to each other. So now hand the card to the other person. So you have the card that was written about you. And I want you, even though you just had them read that to you, I want you to see in their writing what they said about you. Michael and I did each other. Michael, there's your card. Thank you. And I just want you to silently read that card, even though they just said it to you. Just read those words and see what somebody said about you. Okay, now you can put the card down. So I have a question. As you look at that card, by show of hands, how many people might hold on to that card? Almost everybody in the room. Why is that the case? Why is it that people will see us in such a positive light and we won't necessarily see ourselves in that same light? I haven't quite figured that out. Why will we say things to ourselves we'd never say to a friend. I've taken words out of my vocabulary I will never use again. One of them I used to call myself all the time. L-O-S-E-R. Couldn't believe it. David, how could you be such an L-O-S-E-R to do such and such? Not anymore. We'll talk in a little bit about how it makes such a difference when you see this person in the mirror. One of the second to the last things I talk about is find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I believe if you know yourself really well, you find your passion, you'll find your purpose. In the professional world, I got a feeling most people here like working for Withers Lumber. I've already talked to a lot of people. That's the professional side. How about the personal side? It's hard to, to be one without the other. But I will tell you, there's so many things that are a choice. John Lennon was in third grade. He was eight years old. They're going around the room, and they got to John Lennon, and he, the teacher says, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? looks up the teacher and he goes, I want to be happy. And the teacher looks at him funny and the teacher looks back at John Lennon and says, John, you don't understand the assignment. And John Lennon thinks about it a second, looks back at her and says, you don't understand life. That's a true story. Happiness is a choice. How do we decide that? Well, I think one thing, if we're going to embrace gratitude, I think one of the things that, oh, by the way, 
I mentioned on this little uh, exercise, it's such a powerful exercise if somebody else sees us. I did Michael, we both, actually Michael, read what I wrote about you and I'm, I've known you how long? Four minutes? Yep, read what I wrote about you. Hold on, let me, hang on. <laughs> nice to know there's good employees there. Uh, number one. I feel like Phil Donahue. Go ahead. Was handsome. I, I paid him for that. And, and number or he two, paid me. two was handsome also, but, but after that, he said, uh, energetic, great smile, great laugh, uh, can't read, oh, smart, smart, warm, intelligent, and